Susan Banks, Carol Negrelli, Lori Lasowski Fry, Doris Jones. Just some of the women who have made an impact delivering hometown news and weather. Meet them in this WBBZ TV special, Women in Buffalo Television. Hi, everybody. John DeShula with you. Welcome to a special presentation on WBBZ TV, Women in Buffalo Television. You know, we hosted some of the legendary male broadcasters in Buffalo, so we thought it was time to touch base with some of the women who have made a difference. There are so many in Western New York, and while we could not get to all of them, we were able to connect with some key women reporters, anchors, weathercasters, and personalities, including Doris Jones, Lori Lasowski Fry, Carol Jason, now Carol Negrelli, and Susan Banks. Then we'll start at the beginning with one of the first women to appear in commercials as the first host of a woman's program on Channel 7 called For the Ladies, and a weathercaster on Channel 2, the incomparable Doris Jones. It all started with modeling. I was fortunate, uh, graduating from Amherst High School, actually the principal said, I think you have modeling potential. I wasn't even sure what that meant. But I started modeling around town and then television came in and A's and hangers, the big stores had spots where all we had to do was model the clothes. We didn't have to speak. So that's where I did begin. What gave you the confidence, Doris, to want to model and want to appear on television and be on radio and television? You know what? I, in the back of my head, when I was a little child, I'd be riding around on my bike. I would talk to myself like I was a movie star. I have no idea why. And then when I was in high school, I said to my mom, I'm, I want to go to the studio arena and take speech lessons. My mother had no idea what that was all about, and my daddy had died. I would get on two buses from Winspear Avenue and go across the city at night by myself to Studio Arena. Now, there were no true inspirations on radio or television back then. Very few women that I, I can't even recall, but certainly back in those days, who you would have looked to. The uh, way, yes. You know, there are more, maybe more actresses or, or personalities. Well, the one for that first speaking commercial that I did <clears throat> was Furness. I can't remember her Betty first. Betty Furness. Betty Furness, you're right. And she did, uh, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. And I would hear that voice and I would see her on those live movies. And then when I got, it was a GE commercial from Sherm. And that was, you can put your confidence in General Electric. And it was a refrigerator that first time. So um, that, was, that was interesting. But, but, but it was a man's world. You were oh, well, th that's about, that's, I forgot, because that, that's even more important than Betty Furness. The women's libbers are forever asking me, <laughs> who was your mentor? Yeah. And they all want me to say a woman. And I always say Jack Parr. He was, and he's from Buffalo, without a doubt, the best interviewer ever at that time. He could get people to say things they had no idea they would ever say on television. And Channel 7 came to you, and you hosted really their first well, women's focused show. A man called me just a mere acquaintance of mine, not a friend, he was in advertising, called me on the phone one day, he said, Jonesy, get down to Channel 7. They're auditioning for a woman to do a TV show, a daily show. Okay, so I went down, I was there on the very last day. Now, the producer, his name is Labe Mel, I'll never forget it, he put me in the studio, just like you've done, <laughs> put me on a stool. The whole studio was dark, one spotlight on me. He went in the control room. <sighs> I'm thinking, what? And he, all of a sudden, his voice came out. OK, I've just given you a one half hour television show. What will you do? I'm not going to tell you what I thought in my head about him doing that to me, but I thought it gave me the adrenaline. I sat there and I looked at the camera and I started to talk and I talked for probably longer than a half an hour. At the end of which he came out and he said, you've got it. I said, 
um, which of all those ideas that I threw out did you like? He said, do all of them. <laughs> you interviewed Jackie Robinson in, the, in that show when you were doing Oh, that writing. was a highlight. Jackie Robinson was in Buffalo. I don't quite remember why he was in Buffalo, but he was, they put him on my show to interview him. And you see his picture, and I have to say Stan Barron, they, they put Stan on too, but the interesting part happened later. My husband at the time was a buyer for Hengers, and he was in New York City buying. He was on the subway. Someone was reading the New York Post. Jackie Robinson wrote a column which appeared on the back of the paper, and there was my name. My husband, now there were no cell phones, he couldn't call me, he, didn't, he was frantic, he didn't know what to do. Oh my goodness. And Jackie Robinson had said some very kind words. That's very nice. You went to Channel 2 and you're doing the weather, and of course back then you didn't have all the computers that you have today. You literally had happy faces and smiley faces and, and clouds uh, and, and sun. And that was, oh, and they sent, they sent me to the airport for two weeks, meteorological training, you know what I mean? And so that was it. Now they go to college for it. But anyway, if truth be told, we pulled it off the ticker tape. Do you remember the ticker tape? Uh, yeah, I do, <laughs> and, and, and sometimes people still take it off of the internet. Yeah, we took it off the ticker tape, the, the national weather, and the interesting thing about that, for any of you who are doing news and sports, you have scripts. I had nothing, and I had five minutes of airtime, but I never thought about it. So that's probably why I was never scared. So I would bring flowers, I would pick them on the way to the station and put them up in a little vase. And so it was kind of a folksy little thing. And you flew in the WGR radio ski copter. Oh, well. Uh, With your Nancy Sinatra-like boots. They were <laughs> about to let me off on the weekends. <laughs> of course not. So. The helicopter uh, came along, and I flew over the ski areas to do ski reports. And by that time, I had four little ones. Once in a while, they'd go up with me just for the thrill. But one day, I said to Paul Chandra, my boss, I said, um, how come none of the men go up? He said, none of them will. Oh, <laughs> OK. So that's how I got that job. And you were inducted into the Buffalo Broadcast Hall of Fame in 1999. Yeah. And Irv Weinstein was a part of that presentation. Oh my, oh my, Irv. There's only one Irv, you all know that. And I didn't even know that Irv loved me so much. He's up on the stage to do an introduction. He asked the presenter, and of course Irv takes over. I wasn't up on the stage yet, I was down the stairs. He's going on and on about my voice and what I did. And I was digging my nails into my hands saying, you can't cry. You haven't even been up on the stage yet. It was fabulous. What is your secret? I think, um, what is my secret? Um, I think you have to make yourself happy. You've got to just say, well, hey, might as well smile about it. Might as well laugh about it. If you're not laughing, you're going to cry. Well, so. we're smiling with you. God bless you, Doris. You're an inspiration. Thank you. She certainly is Doris Jones right here in our studio just a few weeks ago. When we come back, we'll catch up with Carol Jason. Now Carol Negrelli as Women in Buffalo Television continues.